Guys, welcome back to Arsenio's ESL Podcast, or of course, TOEFL IEBT, wherever you're listening or watching this, whether it's the Facebook page, YouTube, or my podcast. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And finally, I'm beginning to get, my hair is terrible. I'm beginning to get, just had to tell you guys, I'm beginning to get messages. Now remember, when I told you to do the exercise from the speaking part two, I wanted you guys to record, okay, your voice note in terms of summing up everything, okay, that's the reading, limiting that, of course, and then speaking about what the girl disagreed with, and then sending the audio to either my email or my Facebook page. Finally, got myself one from Egypt, okay? A wonderful guy from Egypt living out there in America. He did an amazing job. That one's not gonna debut until I get his approval, which will be next month, but I just wanna give you guys three speaking tips, okay? These three speaking tips will help you significantly straight out of the cage, okay? No pun intended. So first and foremost, when you're doing your speaking test, make sure you slow down your pronunciation so you do not stutter and you do not make haste. Now, I'm not saying speak like this because, of course, then the examiner will know that you're slowing it down so that you can fulfill the time. Do not do that. I'm saying slow down to a normal rate, somewhat like this, so you can get your thought out. Because if you don't, you're going to end up zooming past and speeding through thoughts and examples, and then you're going to, after the recording's finished, look back and say, oh my God, I could have done that differently. I could have done so much better if I just slowed down the speech, okay? Not like that but in terms of you structuring out everything. Because sometimes I know some people who are like, yeah, so basically what she said was this, and after that, and then next you know, 30 seconds, you're going to have to use a hook to go back to something that you possibly didn't cover and maybe you had already covered to begin with, and then that's going to destroy, it, it, it will just discombobulate everything. And that's my next word or that's my next tip. Do not use big words if you do not know how to enunciate big words. Guys, you are not going to be graded upon the biggest words and the most, uh, you know, the, 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 the lengthiest words. I remember there was this guy from Indonesia. He would write me, and I'm like, dude, you're writing supremely academically. Like, it was the craziest thing I have ever witnessed. And I'm like, listen, not even professors from Harvard or Yale write the way you do. You write far too formally, okay? And I know a lot of you will be like, wait, what do you mean by that? Trust me. The way he was writing, I was like, listen, if you speak like that, not many people in the world are going to speak to you, okay? Because you want to be natural. So when it comes to using big words, guys, if you do not know how to enunciate these big words, please do not use them. Because the last thing you want to do is run over not once, not twice, but three times a word that you're trying to get across. And then again, that's just going to ruin the, uh, the remainder of your little talk. Okay. So if you say, example, if you don't know how to say photographer, if you say photographer, and then you go back and say photographer, uh, photographer, the next thing you know, you lost your thought going for the next 10, 20, 30 seconds, however long it is because you disrupted the flow. Do not disrupt the flow. So veer away and stay away from big words that you are unaware and you're not, you're, you're not sure what the, which syllable within the word to stress, okay? And the last tip, you gotta let it flow. And this goes back to, of course, what I just told you in number two. Your goal is to just, sound as natural as you can. I'm talking about speaking at a normal rate, not using big words. And what's going to happen is that's going to lead you into number three in terms of just letting it flow. And when you let it flow, you're going to be more comfortable after that than either, of course, making haste or, you know, big in, using big words that you think will wow the examiner. No. 
if you just say, okay, so the discussion is about this and there are two examples or there were two examples that were given. The first example was the fact that two, three sentences supporting details. Then you go on to your next one. Just letting it flow. And I know a lot of you out there, especially in the likes of Central America, especially Mexico, you guys and your accent and your just the ability to let it flow is fantastic, okay? But remember, do not just blah, 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 blah. You have to speak with context, okay? We can add that in as a bonus tip, okay? When it comes to number two, number three, number four, the speaking parts, do not add your opinion. You're talking about what you heard. The only place that you add your opinion in is speaking part one. Always remember that, okay? So, guys, short video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, man, let me know because I am always available. And I'm going to be doing a speaking part three next. So, stay tuned for that. I'm your host, as always, over and out.